is Tomatoda, and for today's tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how I make a resin clock. I am going to do a giveaway, and this clock is going to be the giveaway prize. I'll have details about that at the end of this video. So let's get started. First, you're going to need a clock mold. These clocks come in two different sizes, and this one is actually the smaller one. First, what we're going to do is take our tape and clean it. And I'm just going to tape off all the dust. One thing is to be careful not to scratch the surface because I've learned that it actually does cause permanent indentations. Now, we're going to start off with the numbers first. I am going to make it blue. Get your resin cup ready and we are going to pour the smallest amount possible, which is 5 milliliters. Make sure you mix everything thoroughly. I'm going to add the pigment and glitter. I want the blue to be more opaque, so I'm using this white. And then add the glitters of your choice. Also keep in mind that the glitter will sink to the bottom, so don't make it too heavy. And now I'm going to take a toothpick and I'm going to drip it into each of the number cavities. When you drip it in, you want to start from the center and have it expand to the corners. Because if you start from the corner, it will trap air. And when you demold everything, you're going to have a bunch of random holes. And if you do pour too much, oh shit, don't worry too much about that either. You can always pick up excess with a Q-tip. I'll show you guys later. Sometimes you can help push it along if it's not really flowing that easily. Slow and steady. Let it flow, let it flow. So if you can see, some of these are overfilled and what I'll do is I'll take a Q-tip and then I'm gonna lift some of the resin out. This, just leave it because we can peel it off when it dries. I do go through quite a lot of Q-tips in this process just because I don't want a dirty Q-tip flooding something else or whatever. You don't have to perfectly wipe everything off because we still have to heat everything to pop the bubbles. And in that process, it's gonna pull everything that's outside of the numbers into the numbers, if that makes sense. You just have to lift off enough excess to make sure everything fits inside the number. If you can see that little spot outside of the one, that is going to pull back into the one. See? So yeah, we're going to lightly pop all the bubbles. Now, if you see here, there's little resin drops and even around the numbers you can see there are mini droplets of resin don't worry too much about that because we're going to let it dry and then use tape to lift them off as long as you don't have resin that is connected to the numbers and they're just in droplet form don't worry too much i'm gonna let the resin cure for about four hours five hours we'll see four to five hours all right, now let's clean this up a bit. For the really tiny pieces, I'm going to use double-sided tape just for more accuracy. 
some of the tiny ones, I'm going to make this little like loop thingy. Make sure to avoid touching the numbers because there's a possibility that the tape is able to lift it off. Now I'm going to pour my first layer of resin. It's going to be clear and I'm going to pour 10 milliliters. Yes, I do know that there's a lot of bubbles in my resin, but SWN. So this is like just enough resin to cover the clock and you'll get like these empty spots but just keep covering them up and it'll work out. Okay, once the surface has been covered, we're going to take our fire and pop all the bubbles. Now I'm going to decorate and add stickers. Then you can add some glitter or some accents. Now I'm gonna try something I've never tried before. So I don't know if this is gonna work, but wish me the best of luck. Also, you don't want it too close to the center because um, the hands might obstruct the stickers. I'm gonna give it a quick blast. Check on this every 10 minutes for the first two hours. Everything has cured fully. Actually, instead of two hours, it only took about 30 minutes of constant watching before the resin started getting really thick. Probably because I took a long time to put everything in here. And now we're going to add in our second layer, just like last time, 10 milliliters. I am going to make the background white, so we're going to add a bunch of shit in that's going to make it white and very very glittery and sparkly. First, the pigment. The thing about epoxy resin is that it will yellow over time no matter what, and some brands will yellow a lot more severely or a lot quicker, and this is despite not being exposed to UV rays. Like you can put it in complete darkness and then after about six months, the yellowness will appear. So if I can, I try to avoid using white as a background as much as possible now. But I think a white background is the only thing that I really think goes well with this. So I'm gonna add a lot of glitter and iridescent crap in it because from experimentation, it seems like it lessens the severity of the yellow. I'm just saying this personally from my experience. I'm going to just kind of swirl it around so that the glitters get evenly distributed inside. And we're going to torture our clock, burn it for answers. What time is it? All right, I'm going to leave this as it is and let it cure for about four to five hours. And then we're going to pour our final layer. The second layer has solidified just enough, but as you can see, it's transparent and I want it to be a solid white, which is why I'm going to be using white casting resin. I'm going to pour 10 milliliters for the third pour. White casting resin cures within 10 minutes, so you have to act really fast. I'm always in a state of panic whenever I use the white casting resin. Okay, so this is the five minute mark and it hasn't fully cured yet, but it will in another five minutes. I'm just going to leave this as it is and then by tomorrow, I'll be able to demold everything. 
So it's been about, I think, 12 hours. It will take longer to fully, fully cure, but by now I can demold. Okay, um, there's a little bit of excess, which I think I can just peel it off. If it's severe, you'll have to sand it off. It is time for the final step. I got this cloth piece on AliExpress. I've also seen the same exact thing sold on Amazon, except it was like maybe two to three times the price. Look how cute this is. Take off the clear film before assembling everything. It doesn't come with instructions, but you can find one online if you google clock piece assembly, I think. Basically, from my memory, it's supposed to go in this order. However, as you can see, the clock is too thick or rather this thing here is too short, so the screw does nothing. Which is why I will remove this piece. And then I'm just going to add this on there and tighten it. Now, if you do it this way, it will, you know, spin around no matter how tight you do it. I'm not sure if this is what's used to prevent that, but since we can't use it, what I will do is Take super glue and then glue the pieces together. And unfortunately, my super glue is closed shut. So what I do is just poke a hole, squeeze it out, and then kind of just cover over the hole. And then I can use it again next time, as you can tell I've done here. Make sure everything is straight. Press down and wait for it to dry. Next, I'm going to put the washer and I'm going to tighten it. All right, careful not to scratch around. There we go, so that looks perfect. Now I'm going to add the hand pieces. The hour hand goes first. Don't force it in because it might bend the hand. Kind of wiggle it in. I think that's good enough. Next is the minute hand. Carefully shimmy in the pieces. And then the last piece, the seconds hand. There we have it, our clock is finished. I just need to test it out now. Let's say it's three o'clock. Okay, I'm gonna add in some batteries. So these clocks take double A battery. And when you put in the battery, careful not to touch the hands because we don't wanna bend them. Actually, I'm gonna put them back at 12 o'clock. Be gentle when you put in the battery because this isn't the sturdiest thing ever, but there we go, it works. Three o'clock. Now I'm going to take out the batteries. You wanna take it out from this side. need to push it back in and it'll work just the same so i hope you guys had fun watching this video i'm very very satisfied with how it came out as for information about the giveaway it'll be on my instagram page go look for my post and enter thanks for watching Bye bye